Hey, welcome back. After each big update, I do two videos. The first one to highlight new features and tools. That's the video from last week. And today, today will be the second one when we talk about features that are still missing, the feature that we are still waiting for. So feel free to mention the feature you are waiting for in the comment and let's get started. So this series works a bit as a change log for us because I made this after each update. As you can see on my document right now, we got some important changes to each version. So let's start with Affinity Designer. All right, so starting from version 2.0, we got very important shape builder tool. And then in a next update, we got a new tool as well. So that was nice. It's just the first update for version 2 and we already got a, a vector bucket tool, right? So we can create new shapes this way. And then we got only two important changes in version 2.2. We got new data entry options. So when you want to kind of modify the object, you can simply hit enter and you got this nice pop up for move and duplicate. That was a new thing in version 2.2 and it was even better in the next version. In 2.3, they enhance that with more options and they give us a new tool for drawing spirals. And in the newest update, we got layer states. Now we can use the alignment panel to resize and rotate objects as well to unify them. And we can export our designs into cut friendly formats. So formats that are friendly for software that is used to make maps, 3D designs and stuff like that. So I would say not that much, huh? but we are still waiting for some important features like the auto trace. Everybody was saying, oh, auto trace is coming in Affinity Designer version 1.5. And now we are on 1.4, sorry, on 2.4 already. And the next update will be 2.5. So maybe, maybe 2.5. So auto trace is still missing. Auto blend between two vector shapes is still missing. Mesh gradients, missing. A real vector brush, I said the real one. In the previous video, somebody correct me. Oh, Mark, but there is a vector brush. Yes, take a look. It's called vector brush tool. But if you pick that and you try to use that, if you zoom in, you will notice that this is not a vector. That's a normal. Raster brush, pixel made. And you cannot extend that to be a vector shape. You cannot extend this brush to be a regular shape. So what we got here is a regular vector path. So that's nice. It's vector path. And on the top of that path, they put the raster brush and they name it vector brush. So that's kind of confusing name. I want the real vector brush with vector brushes on the top that I can expand into vectors. And the big issue, we cannot use right to left scripts. So languages that support those scripts, use those scripts, they cannot work properly in Affinity software. And that's a big issue. All right. How about Affinity Photo? At first, we got our version 2.0, multiple changes. We got some extras on the way, but nothing kind of important, I would say. And in the last one, last one was terrible. 2.3, they gave us pixel grid and that was it. And in this one, we got a support for over 50 cameras. And you may think, oh, that's, that's useless. Actually, it's useful. I got multiple comments from you folks complaining that your camera is not supported, your RAW is not processing correctly. So that's kind of fixed now. We got support from over 50 new cameras, but we are still waiting for those AI selection tools that can save us time. It's kind of the standard now. Now even Mac OS, like the operating system itself can remove the backdrop from images, but I cannot do it in the graphic software, right? So AI select, AI replace, background removal tools, all of those smart tools are missing. We need to use third party for that. I make like a whole video about using third party background removal tools last month. So. We're waiting for that, waiting for new filters and for improvement of bad editing for photographers. They don't want to do it in photo by photo cases, right? So I don't think it's a huge update for photo, but it's way better if you got some of those niche cameras that 
when supported before. And how about the publisher? Version 2.0 was big. Moving forward, we got running headers and area tools added in version 2.1. 2.2 was really decent for publisher. So you got text variables, data formats, cross-referencing. In 2.3, they add option to save our PDFs with passwords and we can modify like the asset backdrop. And that features actually for all three programs. So for design and photo as well. And some of those features also are included in all programs, but I usually put them into one that is kind of benefiting the most from it. In the recent update 2.4, we got this precision alignment with the resize options and also we can lock intersection now. And this is also a cross compatible feature. So we can do it in Affinity Designer and you can do it in Affinity Photo as well. You're going to insertion now a sticky. So if you click on it, it will stay clicked down until you click it up. All right, but we got still missing features like PDF forms that we can fill in later. And a huge one for publishing software. Right to left scripts are not supported. We need some consistent PDF exports. We need caption. We cannot export to e-publication formats from the publishing software. So we are still waiting for some of those key features not supported. So if you zoom out and look at the big picture, I think it's a bit scary. Take a look. We got less and less features. <laughs> this list is shorter and shorter. And same for Affinity. Photo, less and less feature. 2.2 was big for publishers, so that's kind of standing out. So that's a good thing. But Affinity themselves, they confirmed that now they're going to do updates more often and they will be smaller. So smaller update, number one was 2.3 and now it's 2.4. And they will continue this trend. So we will kind of reach the version 3.0 a bit faster. Keep in mind, version 2. Point, sorry, 3.0 will be the paid version, right? So everything until 2.9 will be free, and then we need to pay again for version 3 of the software. We should reach that point around end of the year, next year. So maybe November 2025, I'm guessing. But as you can see, we got some new features for each program, but our list of missing feature is the same. I didn't remove anything from it. So they didn't address any of those important missing features that we kind of highlighting in this video, in the previous one, in the previous one, people been asking for auto trace since version 1.1. <laughs> so here it is, folks. If you want to complain about some missing features, you can do it down here. Let's keep this all under this one video and don't spread all around different tutorials. So this one, you are allowed to complain a bit. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.